All right, everybody, good late afternoon. We've got ourselves a practice report from the Seahawks and the Jets. We've got some information here. Going to go ahead and go over it. Going to take a look at what we might be dealing with this upcoming weekend when we head into New York. Uh, this comes from Nemhauser. Saw it a few other places as well. So let's uh, take a look. And there's going to be a couple of surprises here, although I would remind everybody it is Wednesday. And sometimes you give players a glorified day off for rest and just kind of an eased workload purpose rather than because the injury is actually serious. But um, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, we've got a uh, five players who didn't practice today. Now, one of them is A.J. Finley, who just got here. Uh, he's a new safety, and I wouldn't really read anything into that. So that's whatever. He was, he's not going to play. It's not like he's suddenly going to be like, he's suddenly our starter or something. And Jaron Reed is another one who got a rest day explicitly, so we don't have to worry about that. So it's really just these three. Now, it's pretty significant, these three, right? You've got Tyler Lockett. And at his age and with his level of mileage, it's not really surprising that he would be in and out of the injured list like this throughout the season. So... Tyler, Tyler Lockett, DNP, that one, I mean, you can see that he's he doesn't look 100% in general, so this doesn't terribly surprise me. It is a new injury, though, right? It is a new injury, so something may have happened, and we'll see how he gets through it. And then you've got DK Metcalf with an also new injury, a shoulder. This is not the injury that kept him out for a couple of games. That was the knee. This is a shoulder injury. And I haven't heard anything about it from McDonald or Grubb or anybody. So I don't I don't know what to think about this one right now. I don't know how to feel. And um, somebody needs to tell me how to feel on this one. Because uh, right now it's not a big deal. But we are facing a Jets team. And if there's one with if they have one thing going for them, it's at cornerback right now. Now, I know Sauce is not having a very good year, but he's still a good player. And DJ Reed, of course, is a very good player as well. <clears throat> so we need our receivers. And uh, DK Metcalf not participating with a brand new injury is not something that I want to see. Uh, the third one, Leonard Williams. Now, look, he didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday last week, and then he played the best game of his Seahawks career the, on the Sunday after it. So I don't want to worry about it, but you can see that they're kind of pacing him, and part of it's probably because he's old, but there is some legitimate injury here. So we we don't love that. I, I gotta admit, um, it could be a thing where he's able to be dominant like he was on Sunday, but he's not going to be able to be dominant like that in every game he plays, and the foot injury may not go away till the offseason. So that that's the unfortunate reality of the situation. And hey, like I said, he played great on Sunday, even though he missed a lot of practice, so I'm not going to sweat it, but something's up. Limited participation, we got uh, three guys here, and one of them is got partial rest, Tomlinson, so no injury there. Um, Lakin Tomlinson's an Iron Man. One thing you can say about him, even the last couple years where he hasn't been that good of a player, he, um, he, he doesn't get hurt, so nothing to worry about there. Brady Russell was able to practice a little bit today, so the foot injury seems like he's moving past it. I would expect him to be able to play on uh, Sunday at this point, not that he plays that much anyway. <clears throat> and Uchenna Nwosu was limited, but he is ramping up after spending an extended amount of time on injured reserve, so he's not going to play this week. And the way they're talking, he may not play next week. So we'll have to wait and see on that, but don't expect him to play. Just hope that he makes progress so that he can play next week or the week after. So Uchenna Nwosu, um, don't bite into this one too much. They've already basically told us he's not going to play this week. Uh, we do have a bunch of full participants, including Noah Fant, which indicates very strongly that he will play this week. So the Noah Fant, um, depart, um, Noah Fant absence should be wrapping up soon here. So that's good. We need him. As much as he's not a great player for us, we do need him because Barner's just not quite at the point where he can play 50-plus snaps efficiently. Abe Lucas, full participant, 
So he's made it through two games now with no serious setback. So great news. Chenault, full participant. He should be back this week. Good news. Farrell Brown with the elbow injury, full participant. Draymond Jones continues to have the shoulder injury, but continues to have no problem playing through it. And he's playing fairly decently, so it's not like it's holding him back. Uh, Rayshon Jenkins, full participant with the uh, shoulder injury. Not the hand, interestingly enough. Not the hand. Now it's a shoulder, but it's not serious. And Stone Forsyth in the same boat as Nwosu. Now, <coughs> his boat might be getting there a little bit quicker, actually, because he was a full participant today. But I don't know if we're going to see him active for game day. And um, it, it depends on what happens the rest of this week, but he is ramping up after missing a month. So don't be shocked if he misses uh, one more game. Now, I don't think anybody's going to be upset about that because it's Stone Forsyth, but still, he's there. Okay, so that's it for the Seahawks side of things. Not too bad, not too alarming. Well, the Metcalf thing is kind of alarming, admittedly, but um, we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll cross that bridge later this week. We don't need to worry about it until we get confirmation that it's something to worry about. Uh, let's jump over to the Jets here and see what they're dealing with. So we got Malachi Corley, who's sick. Now, again, if you're sick as a football player, you're probably going to turn it around real quickly. But Corley barely plays for them anyway, so it's not like he has some big role to play that they would miss him on anyway, so... He'll probably be fine, but it doesn't really affect that team because they don't use him. Brees Hall, however, that's the big one. <clears throat> Brees Hall with a knee injury, no participation. And look, the Jets can't run the ball as it is. The Jets have no ability to run the ball anyway. If they don't have Brees Hall, you're down to Braylon Allen and nothing else for a running back. They They don't really have anything else going on in that running back room that is appealing. So... That's a big one to watch, and I know you can't get that much worse than the Jets' running game so far this year, but at the same time, Brees Hall's a good player. He's a talented player. You'd rather have him out there than not have him out there. Not having him out there will have a negative effect. Tyron Smith, uh, neck injury. Now, look, Tyron Smith is very well acquainted with the injury list for years now, back when he was a Cowboy and now that he's a Jet, and he usually plays. So I'm not saying he's not going to play. I think it's a little too early to declare that. Um, what I would say is that if he doesn't play, which, hey, always a possibility, especially for this Jets team that is very hapless and, and rudderless and has no real path to the postseason, then you get Olu Fashanu probably. So even if he's out, the Jets do have a pretty credible player to turn to. So I'm not saying that's going to be some kind of deal breaker, but the Jets have invested pretty heavily into that offensive line, and the results have been mixed, admittedly, but um, they they have replacements if these guys can't go. And uh, Quantez Stiggers, I actually remember looking at him last year in the pre-draft process. No practice, but it's a personal thing, not injury-related, so if the personal issue is not anything overly severe. He will probably be fine, but he's not one of their starting cornerbacks, so it's far from a significant factor here. Limited participation. We've got a bunch of offensive linemen, but only one of them is a starter, Morgan Moses. <coughs> and again, if you're limited on Wednesday, you're almost certainly going to be able to play on Sunday. Granted, Morgan Moses is a little bit older. He is a little bit of a veteran at this point, so an injury to him is probably more significant than an injury to a younger player, so we'll see, but probably fine. Jake Hansen and Xavier Newman, two other offensive linemen, maybe they'll be injured, but doesn't really affect much. They don't start. Now, if Moses and Smith are out, then a guy like a Hansen or a Newman could have mattered more, so we'll just have to see how things shake out, but the Jets have done a pretty good job constructing a pretty serious offensive line in terms of investment. The results haven't been everything they want, but they, they put those resources into it. Uh, full participants, and this first one's interesting, C.J. Mosley with a neck injury. Um, he is a full participant today, which would normally mean there's nothing to be concerned about, but the Jets have already said, 
they're going to use what happened today as a litmus test to determine whether or not he can play this week. And if we see him regress tomorrow on Thursday, then he's probably not going to be able to go. That's a realistic possibility. So keep an eye on C.J. Mosley tomorrow. He's one of their key players in that front seven. And if he cannot go, then that that's a significant setback for them. And even though he was full today, that does not mean he's going to respond well tomorrow. So keep an eye out. D.J. Reed, also a full participant, and Elijah Vera Tucker, a full participant. So I wouldn't worry too much about those two guys. They will play and probably be totally fine. But they're, the Brees Hall thing looms large. If for no other reason than they need him in the passing attack. He has been one of their most prolific passing threats, even though he's not a good, uh, he hasn't been good running the ball. That's more of a Jets thing than a, than a Brees Hall thing. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. That's our initial injury report.